Hi, good afternoon, good morning, and of course, welcome to the class. This is Eric Barak with you, and I know you'll be surprised again to see me. And um, first of all, I love you, and of course, you're my darling students as usual. And today's class will be a great fun today. So sit back, relax, and remember that you're along with Eric Barak. If you're tuning for the first time, I just would like to let you know that uh, I always do the classes with different categories. We do the pre-inter class, we do intermediates and upper intermediates. And so you're always with me, Eric Barak, and your message will be flowing up onto our broadcast. So you can just send your messages, what we'd like to write you about, and definitely I'll be there to answer all your messages. And not to worry, that in the first hour today, we'll be talking about the tenses. For example, the tenses will be talking about all the past tenses today will be in the past simple, past continuous and past perfect will be coming in this hour. We will be doing a lot of exercise together today and remember that in the next hour we will be coming up the relationships topic of vocabulary, also going out will be sports and colloquial language. I'm going to teach you today so not to worry. Just sit back, relax and just enjoy this class with Eric Barak and remember that before we start the class I need to tell you something today. I got special stuff for you. Now you might be wondering what is this all about. Don't worry, I'm not going to put it into your mouth, but I know you're curious to know what is Eric holding a spoon and a lemon? Well, this thing will be coming up later. I will disclose to you why I'm holding this lemon and a spoon will be given out this information a bit later. But now it's time for us to start a class. Now remember the time is now three minutes past uh, 12 and I'll be taking you all the way to two o'clock. Remembering now that at 12.45, we are going to have a commercial break and it will be a break for you guys. Of course, 15 minutes break will be great for you guys. And then exactly at one o'clock, we're going to start a class again with a second topic. Will be a second half of the class. We'll be going with the vocabulary and that's going to be all about relationships, colloquial language, and of course about the sports we'll be talking today right here in the class along with Eric Brack in Just English Channel. Starting off with the first topic today, as we talked about before, it's all about the tenses today, right guys? I'm going to talk slow and I know that sometimes I'm going too fast like a train, but I'm going to talk slow. Love you darlings. Past simple. The simple past is a verb tense that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before now. Also, you can say, for example, consecutive actions or actions which were done in the past. All right, guys, I hope it's very clear to you. Past simple. How do we define, for example, how do we define what is a past simple? If someone comes to and asks you, hey, come on, buddy. Hey, dude, come on, tell me what is past simple? You should just tell the person, hey, past simple is a verb tense that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before and now. Also, you can say, in other words, consecutive actions or actions in the past. Let's take a simple example here. He won the silver medal. Now, when you say he won the silver medal, now, for example, you see there, your, the, the word, your verb, uh, is in the second form. It says they won. He won the silver medal. It means what? That the action was done in the past and it's done, it's not continuing, it's done and it's over and it's gone. So that's why, in example, we talk about it says here, he won the silver medal. Whereas, on the other hand, the second example, the second sentence, if you look on the board, it's not here, guys. It's down there on the board. It says he didn't wash his car. Now, when you say he didn't wash his car, it means what? The person didn't do his action. For example, the action was that he was supposed to wash his car, but he did not do that. And the action has gone in the past. And definitely here, it's he didn't wash his car. It means what? It's a negative action. All right, guys? Great. She saw a movie yesterday. This number three sentence and number four. We see very simple. Fati entered a marathon yesterday. Now that is a little bit tricky here. When you say Fati entered a marathon yesterday, now that actually means what? Uh, Fati went into the race, for example, and he entered into it, and no one knows whether he won the won the race or not. But 
for sure he went into the marathon yesterday and guess the time uh, the time has passed in the past and it's gone it's past simple so it's not continuing the race or the marathon was done it's finished it was done yesterday and today is a new day so it's gone in the past so that's why we say there are Farthi entered a marathon yesterday. All right, guys, your messages are flowing over here. Thank you so much for that. I can see a lot of messages, but I'm going to read your message a bit later. All right? Now, remember, off screen, I might go and I will come back in the screen, but not to worry. I'm not going to leave you guys. Come on, we're going to be together for two hours. We have to study a lot today. So don't get panicked. Don't get nervous. Don't get worried. Where is Eric gone? Eric is very much here. So don't have to worry for that. All right, guys. Good. As you know, today is like 21st of May. Today is Thursday, and you're enjoying with me, Eric Barak. Right here, we just have the class. And the time is 7 minutes past 12. We'll be taking all the way to 12.45, getting a break for 15 minutes. And of course, at 1 o'clock, we start with the next second hour. Will be great topics today. Will be all the relationships, calling the languages, and of course, sports. And I'll be ending up around X million at 1.45. So... Just relax and don't think about what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do this evening, what I'm going to eat tonight. Right now, guys, forget everything. Right now, you're talking about grammar and we are learning only about relationships and about sports coming up the next hour along with me, Eric. Love you, my darlings. Now, remember, the past simple is very simple. Also, it means right. You need to have a formula every uh, tense in the grammar. Remember, to make your life more easier, always get your formula. And to get your formula, it's very, very simple. Get your formula into your brains. Make sure that you understand your formula very well, how to categorize your words in the past or whatever. That's the time you get to know your grammar. Am I right? Hello, did you get what I'm saying? That's the time you get your grammar when you know your formulas, my darlings. For regular verbs, remember in formulas, we do also have in past simple, we have regular verbs and we have irregular verbs. For example, when it's a regular verbs, you always end them with ed. If there's e there, just add on d there, okay? On the board, I've given you some examples. Let's have a look together. It says play goes to played. Listen, we're adding ed there, and then we've got type. I've just told you just a second ago that there are some words we got uh, who are ending with e, but you just need to add d there, and generally in the past, you, on the second form, you always use ed there if there are regular words. Now, with the word type, we say typed, and for most of the regular verbs, just try to remember always and to understand that the regular verbs, the simple past tense, is created by adding a, d, ed, and of course your ied at the end of the word. Irregular verbs do not follow the same pattern. Did you understand, students? It says here, irregular do not follow this pattern. So it means what? You got another pattern, okay? It's not the same pattern of regular verbs. We got irregular verbs. They got totally different pattern. Example, see, past goes to saw. Whereas go is your went. Do is your did. Now, here we got some examples into uh, in a sort of uh, into the box here. And if we go to the examples, we got the present tense, and we got a past tense. Hey, sorry guys. Hello. Hang on, hang on, my dear. We are not talking about present tense here. It's just an example, okay? Present tense is live. In the past, it goes to live, adding a D there. Then you got love, adding D there in the past. Your date, adding on into D, and whereas your agree is agreed, and die is died. And of course, when you have a Q, it's cute. Now, guys, remember, the word Q, let me give you some vocabulary. Now, what is Q? I know some people don't understand the word Q. Now, Q is actually a word where you, you know, it's like basically stringing a line. For example, you go to the end of the bank or you go to the restaurant and you have to stand in a line to pay your money. Now, that's called a Q. 
example you can say hey bilal or hey bushra is standing in the line hey bushra is standing in the queue now that's a similar so you can use the word line or queue it does have the same meaning i hope you understood right guys so don't worry you're along with eric and you're enjoying right here in the class with me and the time is 11 minutes past 12 i'll be taking you all the way till 12.45, we'll be getting a break between for 15 minutes and not to worry. Get yourself your pencil and your paper ready. Now, I'm going to look some of your, for example, your messages which are flowing on the broadcast. We got a lot of messages here. Wow, that's great. Now, let me just quickly say hi to all of you here. Oh, we got Halil Usan here. We got Mystifier, Hafiz Mystifier. We got here Marvi P. We got Nevin Cascane. We got Sal Khan Sabanche. We got Aidan Gnews. And wow, that's great. Uh, teacher, can you zoom the screen, please? Of course, I, I would love to do that. I will do that shortly. But guys, remember one thing. I will love you guys to just call me Eric, please. Call me Eric or you can just call me Barack. Please don't call me teacher because I don't like to be called teacher, guys. But don't worry, I then you can just call me Eric. All right, guys. I love you, my buddies, because you are the best guys, and not to worry that we will be doing everything together. Now, guys, let's go into a quick, uh, you know, like uh, refreshing the sentences. And before that, let's go into the example of still here. We are talking into the past simple. We talked about uh, how we're going to use uh, past simple, right? Here we got Bilal polish his medal. Now, when you say Bilal polish his medal, now this is what the other winner polished their medals. Now, when you say their medals, it's more than one person. Just remember that. All right, guys. Now we got here also Elif Kagler. Hey, Elif. Love you, my darling student. Thank you for joining and concentrate. You joined the class late, but not to worry. You are here with me. Great. Now here we go. The next one we got here is uh, Bilal Polish's medal. The other winners polished their medals too. Question form. Also, we have did plus subject plus rest form of the word. Remember, guys, past simple is always we got into the question form too. Now, if you want to ask this for you know into a question form, you can ask us: Did Bilal win the medal or silver medal? Did he win the gold medal or a silver medal? Now, that's what you can ask in a question form. Hey, Ramzan. Hey, Pauline. Dixon. Hey, hi, guys. Hey, guys. I'm sorry. You know, I'm so sorry. You are my darlings. You know, but I'm so sorry. I can't pronounce the term. Turkish names, please forgive me. All right, guys, and get back to the class. Uh, did Bilal win the golden medal or a silver medal? Now, this a question mark you got there, and then you got here. Where did Bilal go to celebrate? Now, that's again a question mark, guys. Now, if you can look on your screen, we got a yellow box there, and I will. I'll be just giving you like one second quickly. Could you just let me know the first answer and the second uh, in what form it's going to be? The question sentence is children dash in the bracket. We got the word dress quickly. Now tell me what is going to be, what's going to be answer here, guys. I need your answer. Hello, darling students. Are you going to sleep? Hello, don't sleep, guys. Come on, tell me the, tell me the answer. Children dash dress quickly. Hello, where are you? Oh, that's Fatima dressed. Wow, that's great. So you need to add E there. My darling Fatima, you are done a good job. It seems like only Fatima is awake and rest so sleeping. Hey, come on, don't sleep. This is my class. This is Eric here. 50 minutes past 12. That's a good answer. Then Fatima is going to answer to you. We got now in saying get dressed. That's a good job. We got Mari Peter. Trust and the second uh, answer she gave is health. That's great. We got the first sense of dress, second answer is help, and then we got number three and number four and number five. Guys, I want you guys to give me the answers quickly for three, four, and five. Get me the answers, guys. I can see your message are flowing. Thank you so much for that. And if you've tuned for the first time, remember you're along with Eric Barak, and you can just call me Barak or Eric. It doesn't matter. But don't call me teacher, guys. Come on. Because I just need to be called Eric or Barak, and I'll be taking all the way to one four. 45. Your messages are flowing. Thank you so much for that. Now we got here is Simra Osturk. Hi, Eric. Can you zoom the screen, please? I can see on the phone. 
Wow, that's great, Simra. I will do that shortly. Not to worry. I'm going to fix my Zoom issues and not to worry. You guys will be interesting and you'll be enjoying my class. Not to worry. Solution, Sibantri. The answers go to what? That's great. We got wash number five. And then we got a Simra says, Oh, a little. Come on, my darling student. I'm going to do that. Not to worry. The time is now 16 minutes past 12. We got nearly. 25 to 26 minutes to go for a break, but not to worry. Catching up my email address, Barack Eric1429 at gmail.com. Well, guys, during the week, for example, whenever you have like a free time or you want to ask me any information, sort of just send me an email and I will reply you back at Barack Eric1429 at gmail.com is my email address now guys i understand that some of you are writing me messages on my whatsapp hey guys hey my buddies don't write me on the whatsapp right now because i'm i'm on live broadcast so write me on the class definitely here but not on my whatsapp right now you can talk to me later it does not make a big problem marvy p says what wash washed fatima says what Niwan, Niwan says, watch, hey, great, thank you so much for that. Now, let me come back and let me show you my face. Don't worry, guys, I'm still around here. I'm not gone anywhere. Hi, I'm here. And guys, here you got your spoon. Now, you might be wondering why the spoon is still here. Now, guys, remember, I'm not going to put everything into your mouth, like putting everything into your mouth, putting a verb into your mouth, or putting a noun into your mouth, or putting a past simple into your mouth. <laughs> That's certainly what you have to do yourself. All right, guys, so you are doing a good job, and I can really I can really understand that you are really doing good. You are doing good, and let's go to the next part now. It says your complete sentences with a past simple form of the verb in brackets, and use your contractions where possible. Now we got here eight sentences. Let's get ready. Fasten your seatbelts. Get ready. Open your eyes. Guys, come on. And let's read the sentences and get to the answers together. I'm going to check on your screen definitely and see what be the answers. Let's go for number one sentence. And I need your, you know, like contribution. It says here, we really dash the bracket is enjoy the game last Sunday. Number two, dash Marco slash win the golf competition. Number three, now it says you're there, bracket not play very well yesterday. They lost the match. Number four, how many goals dash your team slash score in the first half? And then you got Sarkan dash not want to. Go wrong with me. And then you got number six there. Dash, there, go to the swimming pool yesterday. And number seven is I dash buy a new baseball cap last week. And your last one here is for the past simple James that stopped his car in front of the sports shop. I'm going to give you my darling students. I love you so much. Mm, I love you guys. Come on. I'm giving you this eight sentences. Now let's stick to this eight sentence, right? I want you guys to give me the answers. Look into the sentences very carefully. Remember, it's a past simple. The actions have been done. So try to give me the answer. I'm just giving you like only 10 to 15 seconds. While I give you 10 to 15 seconds, I'm going to drink uh, my, of course, I'm going to drink my drink. Why should not a drink have my drink? Get your answers while I take my drink. Hmm, wow, this lemon drink makes me really so energetic and fresh. Hmm, wow. Hmm, that's great. This drink is really good. And I also encourage you guys to have this drink. Like in a day, try to get yourself a lemon water drink stirring with some salt and honey. That's going to really not get you dehydrated. Remember, this is very good for this weather. Try to have always a lemon with warm water, add some honey, and add some lemon, some salt. 
steroid properly and drink maybe at least three to four glasses a day, it will not get your body what dehydrate. And now let's go into the answers and check what you guys have the answers for us. We were just talking about our past simple sentences. I know that you're going to give me the answers and shortly I'm going to check on your screen. If you're tuned for the first time, remember you're along with Eric Barak and uh, I take you all the way till 1.45 today. So you'll get, get the right answers and let's see what comes next. So before we go to the past continuous, let's quickly finish off this eight sentences. We got the answers here now. Let me scroll down and check the students' participation we got here. Uh, Ramzan, I'll take his play. Then we got Marvy P. She says number two is Ditch and then Mark Wing. And then we got here is um Marvi, she says they didn't play. Then Fatima says they didn't play. And then we got here, Muhammad Al Sahin. Hey, I'm sorry. And hi, Muhammad Ali. Great to see you. Okay, guys, we got the answers. We got number one here. Guys, your message is still flowing. Thank you so much for that. The time is 22 minutes past 12. You're along with Eric right on the Just English channel, taking it all the way till 12.45, and your break will begin for 15 minutes. Not to worry for that. Let's go back to your answers now. Number one, we really enjoyed. So your answer will be enjoyed for number one. Number two is going to be Did Marco. That's a good job, Mary. You did a good job, actually. Give me the right answer. Thank you very much for that. And we got here number three. The answer is going to be there didn't uh, not play. That's going to be your answer. Number four, your answer is guys, did you team score? Now that's your answer. Number five will be didn't didn't want. And then your number six is going to be did they go? Your number seven is going to be bought. And your number eight, that is stopped. Now here I can see the message coming from Navin Kish King. Uh, she says they, they didn't play. Now that sounds great to me. Thank you so much for your participation, guys. Yes, you're welcome into my class. 23 minutes past 12, and we are talking all about the different type of tenses. We just started today was with past simple, and we are going to go into the next term. Uh, what you call next tense and the next tense guys is going to be you know which one i know that's your favorite and that's my favorite tense too and we're going to talk about a tense called past continuous now guys to use your past continuous you always remember that you need to have a formula for example you need to have was were and plus your verb ending with ing now remember if you don't have your formula was were and your verb ending with ing then i am sorry then that's not your past continuous. If you don't choose your formula was or plus or by ing, make sure you use a formula to get your past continuous. Love you. It describes actions or events in a time before now, which began in the past and we're still going on. When other event started, now remember, past continuous is all about that it describes about the actions or events in a time before now, which began in the past. Remember, it, the event started in the past, and we're still going on on when the other event started. It means what? Generally, it means there were two of them. So one was still continuing, it never stopped. And while it never stopped, the second one interrupted and stopped. So it means what? There were two of them. Before the one stopped and the one just jumped in. So that's how it is called as a past continuous. And the words going from past are still continuing with the second event. Example. Let's go for example. When we arrived, he was having bath. Now, when you say when we arrived, he was having bath. Now, for example, it's a very simple way of understanding. Here are the two actions. One is when we arrived. We arrived. And the person was taking shower. Shower. The person is taking shower. Got it, guys? Now, that's all about when we arrived, he was having his bath. Now, also, guys, you can say shower is similar words, all right? Now, the question says, yeah, how to form a past continuous? Now, that's an interesting part here. 
Sometimes students are not only students, right? For example, people across the world, they don't understand how to uh, create or how to form a past continuous or past simple. But past continuous is not difficult, very right? simple. Verb to be with was verb and the base main verb and your plus ing. All right, my students, my darlings, did you understand? Hello? Verbs to be was and were and the base main verb plus ing. All right, guys, if did not go into ear, you need to buy a cotton bud, put and clean your ear <laughs> to enjoy my class. We got a subject there and then we got a was and were and then we got base plus ing. All right, guys, so that's your formula down there. They were watching. Now, there. Now, guys, remember the word there is actually means not one person, not two person. There are many people. They were watching. They were playing. So that's all about there in the past, right? And then it was continuing with ing. That's your word with ing. Then we got affirmatives that she was reading. And then we got negative. Uh, the negative sentence is about here. She wasn't reading. All right, guys. So that's very simple. We also have in the positive and we have the negative. The negative sounds is like she wasn't reading. That means what? That maybe someone might, might have gone there and she they might have saw this girl that she was not reading. She was just maybe sitting or you know eating food or you know having a drink, but she was not reading. So that's exactly means what that the action started in the past, but it was still continuing that she was not during the time when they saw her. Okay, guys. Now let's do some questions together. Small tiny some chances here. And uh, let's put your answers. It says make the positive or negative past continuous was or were. Let's go. I'm giving this sentence, guys. I'm just going to be like only three seconds. Hello, three seconds, all right, or five. Do you want three seconds or five seconds for this sentence, guys? I need the answers. Hey, Sir Khan, Kar, Shakas. Hey, Jade. Hey, thank you. Welcome to the class. We got Ankin, Siran. Hey, love you. You can just call me Eric or you can call me Barack. Great. Love you guys. We got here Ankin, Sir Khan. Thank you very much. Guys, here are your questions again. On the board, Sir Khan, sleep at 3 p.m. Now tell me what's going to be answers, you guys. I need your answers. Remember, it's going to be your past with was, were, continuing. Your verb has to go with ing. Guys, get me your answers. Hello, are you there? Hello, are you guys there or not? I don't see your answers, guys. Where are you? Okay, we got Halil Ozari gave me the answer. Sarkhan was sleeping. Good, good job, Halil. Right answer. We got your knowing says was sleeping, was dancing. <laughs> Oh yeah, dancing like Tarkan or like Gushka. That's great. We got you now again now we sing dancing. We got Ali here giving the answer for road dancing. That's the right answer. We got here again now when we were watching. Wow, now when you say we were watching, guys remember we means more than one person. Alright, that's great. We got you Marwi Road Dancing. Superb, good job. You're doing well, guys. Come on, it's 30 minutes past 12. We got only 15 minutes to go for a short commercial break. And remember, if you join me right now, you're along with Eric Barak, and I'll be taking all the way to 145. You got a break at 12:45, so 50 minutes break will be for you to have your light snack. Don't eat too much food in the, at the break time, because I don't want you guys to sleep in my class. All right, so get a light something a bite or get a drink or get some water and then come back to the class one o'clock and we'll have a great time remember your second hour is going to be a great topic today it's going to be all about relationships we're going to talk about sports and we're going to talk about Korean language how we do use that language during our conversations or the time we write and so everything will be coming very shortly so stay tuned and enjoy your class along with me every 31 minutes past 12 and also remember that sometimes I might be not able to read your messages but definitely I am reading your messages it's not a big problem so you have to just stick around and listen to me very carefully if you've done a good job here right now great now let's go back to your next session 
Hi, I'm back again. Now guys, look here. For example, as we talked about past simple, we talked about past continuous, and now it's time for us to go to the last bit today, and that's going to be all about your past perfect. Now here, look at the board, guys. Past perfect. Now what is past perfect? That question mark is always in students, or the question mark always comes to people across. Hey, but Eric, past simple, past continuous, past perfect, are they all same? No, they're not the same. My answer is they're not the same. Here I am teaching them right now. Love you. Past tense. This tense got a special role to talk about the earlier past example. Things which happened before the main events. Your formula is had plus your past participle. Now guys, remember when you say past participle, that has to come along with your had. That's into the earliest past. Things which happened before the main event. All right, guys. I give you a very simple example here, guys. Don't look at my face. It's written on the board. I had finished the work. <laughs> I love you. I had finished the work. Now that is what your subject is. I there. Then you got had. Then you got finished as your word past participle, and then the word comes as your rest. Sentence. All right, guys. Now that's all about how you you create your past perfect. Your simple example with a formula is your formula should be had plus your past participle, and your example is I had finished the work. Now I is your subject. You got your had is there. Now remember, if it's had, that's in the present, but it has to go had is in the past, and your finish goes with ed, where your word past participle is joining up with ed, and then you go. The rest part of your sentence here we can see on the board is the word. All right, guys. Now, next sentence here is Simmer had known about it for a while. Now, that's and the sentence. And then we got here after she had moved out, I found her notes. Now, that's great. So it means what? She's a subject, and then you got moved here with word past participles. And remember, always positive, negative, and question form. We got a lot of sentences here. Hey, we got here. Tastar. Now, guys, I love you guys, but I'm sorry. I'm not able to understand in Turkish. And I think there's a messenger in Turkish. Uh, Tastar. Burdalan. Uh, oh, my God. I really can't understand. Fanal brush. I got I There you go. Here we are. Hey guys, I love you. That's for sure. Right? Always positive and negative question form. Okay, guys, remember your past, uh, you know, your past perfect always has a positive, negative, and of course, it helps God is your question, right? Example, I had finished the work. You can say that, then you say he had finished the work. Alright, guys? Then you have they had finished the work. Now had is used because of the work, because it's in the past. Situation, right? Then you go to the negative. It says here, you had not talked to my brother, or you know, here is your you is your subject, and your talk is your word past participle, and then your recent chances to my brother. And then she says, uh, she had not talked to my brother. If you go to the question form, now guys, just remember, question form is not so difficult. A lot of time people mess it up, but question form is not difficult. Remember, the question form is always your your, your subject and your head only switch of the places. For example, uh, your subject comes into the second and your head goes on the first. We start with a question mark. Had you seen the tower? And it says your had, and then your subject is you, then your word past participle is going to be your scene in the third form. Remember, what three and ten, you get your rest sentence, that's the tower. Now, second question or the second sentence says about here, had the boy seen the tower? Now, that's all we are talking about. Remember, your past uh, perfect has three forms and it has a positive, it got the negative format, and of course, it's into the question form. The time is 35 minutes past 12, and guys, remember that you're along with the Eric Barak, and I'm taking you all the way till today, till 1.45, but shortly. Within the next 10 minutes, I'm going to give you a break. So after the break, you're going to have your great time with me. Next class will be coming up. Will be relationships, not forgetting out. Will be a topic also talking about sports. And you're going to talk about, uh, okay, calling the language will be coming, which will be quite interesting. I'm going to recap very quickly. 
if you join my class right now, just remember, I'm going to recap very quick before I sign out for a short commercial break. We are talking about the tenses today. We talked about past simple, past continuous, and past perfect. I'm going to recap past simple. Guys, it's not written on my face. It's written on the board. Look there, past simple. The simple past is a word tense that is used to talk about things that happened or existed before. Just remember that the things which happened in the past or what we talk about, it happened in the past, it happened, it existed before, and also you can say it's a consecutive actions or actions in the past. All right, guys, examples are in front of you. Let's do the simple examples. Look on the board. He won the silver medal. Then you say he didn't wash his car. Then when you say didn't wash his car, means what? It was in the past. The person, he never got a chance to wash his car. So in other words, he didn't wash his car. She saw a movie yesterday, and then we got here, Fati entered a marathon yesterday. Now, that's great. Fati entered marathon yesterday. Now, that means what? The person went for a race. Now, marathon is actually somehow similar to the race, and the person had gone, person joined into the marathon. It was yesterday, but it went past. Time was over, everything has been done, and we enter the new day today. So when you're in the new day, you go with a pass and say, 40 entered with your ED a marathon yesterday. It's not for example, remember the past symbol, we always have verbs with the regular ribs, we got irregular. So remember the regular ribs always are if they're ending with E, remember you should always add D there. And if they're ending just without nothing, uh, if they're AD, just put E D there. Example is on the board for you there, guys. Look there. Play is played. Listen is listened. We got typed is typed. And then, of course, also the regular verbs are very simple in the past. They're creating your adding. For example, you need to add your ED there, or your D or your IED needs to be added if it's going into the past simple with the regular verbs. On the other hand, guys, remember, on the other hand, your irregular verbs are never the similar. They don't follow the same pattern of a regular verbs. Just remember that, okay? They always have a different pattern. For example, you can say as C is saw in the past form, whereas go can go into the wind and do is did the lot of the different examples we got there. And looking into the chart we got here, it says your rules for regular reps. For example, oh my god, it's present tense and past tense. Now don't start getting panic. Oh my god, Eric, it's present, it's past. Hello, just relax, relax, calm down. Relax. Present tense is live past. It's lived. Present tense, love, and the past is loved. All right, guys. We got date here is dated. Agree is agreed. Die is died with D. And of course, if you go for Q, it says cute. Now, I've given you uh, the meaning, similar meaning word, for example, it's a synonym. When you say uh, Bushra, is standing in the queue. For example, you can say Bushra is standing in the line. It's still similar. We got Sybil here. Hey, Sybil. Good. How are you? Welcome to the class. And I'm sorry, my darling Sybil, my student. I'm not able to understand Turkish, but thank you so much for joining. Guys, I'm not crying, but I'm going to cry because I can't understand Turkish. That's a problem, but not to worry. Stare. Stare is present and stared is with Dina. That's your past. And then you invite girls and followed by in the past is your invited. Now, guys, some more examples. We're still going to stick into past simple along with Eric Barak. And guys, just remember my email address is Barak Eric1429 at gmail.com. During the week, you can just uh, write me an email if you want to know anything about your lessons or you want to know anything about any information of the vocabulary or the meanings. Love you, my darlings. I'm always there to help you, not to worry. Don't think, oh, I don't want to bother Eric. I don't want to disturb Barack. Hey, guys, Eric Barack is the same person, and that's me here. So you can just drop me an email under Barack Eric 1429 at gmail.com. I'm going to repeat my email address again Barack Eric 1429 at gmail.com. The time is right now 40 minutes past 12. 
Coming up shortly will be a short commercial break, and after the break, we're going to go into one o'clock, setting back the class live stream right here on Just the Channel, along with Eric Barak. We'll be taking on to 145, with the next topic coming up will be all about relationships. You'll be getting all colon language and spells coming shortly. Now going into your past simple. Bilal polishes metal. The other winners polish their medals too. Now that's in the past. You can see on the board, this is Bilal polish. We put the ED there and then other winners polish their medals too. Question form. Example, did plus subject rest form of the word. Did Bilal win the gold medal or silver medal? Now that's your question mark there. Did Bilal win the gold medal or the silver medal? For example, your second question see there, it says, where did Bilal go to celebrate? Now guys, remember, we have, when you have a question mark, it always goes with did there, and then your subject comes into between after did, because you ask a question, adding on your rest form of the word. Now guys, remember, if you don't, if you miss out any one of them, for example, you miss out your subject, or you miss out, you know, your did, definitely you'll be not able to make your question format in the past simple. So always remember, just look into the formula. It says here, did plus subject plus rest form of your word. Now that is what I want you guys to understand. I want you guys to mug it up. Now when you say mug it up means memorize all your tense formulas. Okay guys, yes, I know it's not easy. It's very difficult. We have a lot of formulas, but remember, you need to understand and to mug up all and memorize all the formulas to make your tenses very simple and more clear and to use them properly in your sentences or how to make your sentences. We got past continuous, we got past perfect, we got past simple. And of course, we got past perfect continuous, which I'm not going to teach today in the class. Remember, tomorrow evening, I'm going to have a class at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So don't get panicked, don't get nervous, don't get worried. Oh, Eric, where are you gone? Eric, where you are? Hey, darlings, I'm here. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm going to be with you guys, so not to worry. Tomorrow the whole day, have your good sleep, have your rest, do your work. And later at 6 p.m. tomorrow, I'll be doing a live broadcast from Just English. So you need to stick along with me and learn more about it. tomorrow. We got a lot of things to do actually. It's going to be a great surprise. And tomorrow there's a hamper, guys. Remember that. Tomorrow you might win some chocolates because Byram is in the corner. So guys, you need to be there tomorrow. 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. because Byram is coming very shortly. So you might get a chance to win a chocolate or candy for yourself if you give the right answer tomorrow. Between 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Eric Barak will catch you right here on Just English Channel. The time is 43 minutes past 12 and your messages are still flowing right here on the screen. Thank you Steven for joining the class. Coming up a short commercial break, stay tuned along with Eric and of course after the break we're going to go into the relationships directly with your spouse and Korean language will be coming very shortly only after the break. Just remember that you should not go anywhere because we got you know the corona COVID-19 is still going on. Make sure you do your proper demonstrations, right? Do your proper procedures to go out of your house, to go into the grocery or to meet your friends. Make sure that you wash your hands, or, you know, use your clown, uh, wear your mask and wear your gloves and that's the right time. Make sure walk out of your house and also do have a social distance. That's very important. Try not to shake hands with your loved ones or with anyone else because life is very important, guys. And without life, we are nothing. So just remember, thank you so much, guys. I know that you've been so loving. You're so caring, darlings of mine. You are my darling students and guys, really, I love you a lot. I have been missing you a lot, guys. It's almost two months. I miss you a lot, but I'm, I'm so happy that right again we're together and very soon we are going to meet face to face. Not to worry. Coming up, short commercial break, 45 minutes past uh, 12 o'clock. And Eric says from here a very good afternoon. Dünyadan hemen kalkman gerek Adım at ki gerçekleşsin her dile Bekliyor seni 
parla bir gelecek sen ona gittikçe o sana gelecek Justin Lee şimdi sen de dile gel Justin Lee şimdi sen de dile Justin Lee şimdi sen de dile gel Justin Lee şimdi sen de dile gel Satisfaction and learn to survive in the outside world just sting your style Learn, play, sing and dance, do what you don't see anywhere else right. Learn, play, sing and dance, do what you do, just sting your style Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren macerayla tanış Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarış Sen de bir dil öğren bu dünyaya karış Justin Dish'le şimdi sen de dile gel Justin Dish'le şimdi sen de dile gel Enthusiastic and enthusiastic and enthusiastic. Re, Richie, Richie, can you remember? Recipe, recipe. Enthusiastic. Recipe. Pida. Recipe. Clark. 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 Pronunciation.
olduğun yerden hemen kalkman gerek Adım at ki gerçekleşsin her dilek Bekliyor seni parla bir gelecek Sen ona gittikçe o sana gelecek Just Englishle şimdi sen de dile gel Just Englishle şimdi sen de dile Just Englishle şimdi sen de dile gel Just Englishle şimdi sen de dile gel A world with a joyous smile, a world where A will only buy Satisfaction and then survive in the outside world just sing your style Learn, play, sing and dance, do what you don't see anywhere else right. Learn, play, sing and dance, do but do just sing your style Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarı Sen de bir dil öğren macerayla tanış Hayat devam ettikçe bitmez bu yarı Sen de bir dil öğren bu dünyaya karışacağız Şimdi sen de dile gel Just Englishle Şimdi sen de dile Enthusiastic and uh, enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. <gülüyor> Re, Recipe. Recipe. <gülüyor> Recipe. Recipe. Enthusiastic. Recipe. Bir daha. Recipe. Clark. 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 Pronunciation. <gülüyor>
Hi, and welcome back after a short commercial break here along with Eric Burak here. We had a break in the time right now. It's uh, exactly one minute past one o'clock and I'll take you all the way till 1.45. And guys, I'm really sorry. I apologize all of you. I totally understand that you were not able to, uh, you know, read properly on the board because it was not Zoom. But right now I did a Zoom. So it should not be a problem for you guys. So remember the second hour, we're going to talk about the relationships and we're going to talk about uh, Korean language and the sports. All right, guys. So the topic here today is a great topic, relationship sports. And of course, we're going to talk about Korean language two minutes past to the time. And of course, you're starting along with Eric Brock here. And there we go. I hope you can see the board right now. We are talking about the relationship. Now, relationships, guys, remember, we don't have only one relationship. We have different type of relationships. For example, I have highlighted for you, we got the relationships of a family relationships we got here. We got here friendships, we got here acquaintanceships, and of course, we got the romantic relationships. So we got like four different type of relationships. We are going to talk about each relationship. So guys, this is a vocabulary class. I want you guys to have your paper along with your pen and a pencil. There will be a lot of information I'll be giving you out under the title of relationships. We're going to talk about spells and calling the language will be coming right here in this hour. So get make sure you have your paper ready and so you can write in all the information information here. I can see students are back here. Elif, hi and hi there. Type of relationships, family relationships, we got friendships, we got acquaintanceships, uh, romantic relationships. Now guys, remember how can we define the word relationship? Now that is something I think where we need to understand how we need to define the word relationship. Now there are two words, relation and then we got here is a ship. So when you join them together, it's called relationship. For example, the way in which two or more people or things are connected or the state of being connected is called a relationship. All right, guys, I'm going to repeat it for you. The way in which two or more people or things are connected or the state of being connected is actually called a relationship. Relation. And then you got a ship here. We have two different words. When they are connecting together, it's called as a relationship. Now, for example, the relationship has, uh, you know, why is it connected? It says here it got sort of a connection. Then it got a relation. It got association. It got a link. It got a correspondence. And definitely also uh, it got, uh, sorry, guys, it got down here. It's a correspondence. It's got a parallel. It's got a bond. So. These are things which make a relationship. Remember that. For example, uh, the words are two different words. We've got a relation word. we got a word called shape. And of course, you join them together. And then it comes under the banner of a relationship. And relationship actually means what? When two or more than two people get connected or things get connected is actually called a relationship. In that, you do a relationship associations are done. You do a link between people. You get a correspondence, you got a parallel, and you got a bondage here. And here we got here is uh, Elif is just online with us. Hi there. Then we got here is Silan Nisar. I don't know, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, we got here. Uh, let's talk on the relationships of uh, connected by blood or marriage. Now, when you say a relationship which is connected with the blood, now that's actually uh, your siblings. For example, your relationships, your siblings. Now, siblings. Now, don't ask me what are siblings. If you don't know what a sibling, now let me explain you quickly. Siblings are actually your brothers and sisters you have, right? Now they're called your siblings. So siblings are the ones which are by blood. It's like you have the same parents, you know, dad and mom and whatever. The DNA stuff is called the blood, and that's how you're connected to one another. And the second uh, part is the marriage. Definitely, a relationship of a marriage is very, very uh, respected and it has to be respected because it's just a relationship where uh, two people join together and then, you know, uh, you get a chance and God blesses people and, uh, you know, uh, children come and that's how the siblings are, are formed. And that's a, a, a great process which is given by God, a good relationship. Now, that's between a blood or a marriage. They can trace their relationship to a common ancestor now. That's the time when the relationships are there between uh, your family and your relations, your ancestors, your you know people who have lived in the past, your generational things can be only clarified or can be only checked 
if there is a relationship between them, if there's a bond of blood is there, that's how it is connected. For example, the word that is called family ties. Guys, look here. The word is family ties. Then you got your family connections. Then you got your blood relationship. And you got here blood ties. Now, these are four categories. Family ties, family connections, blood relationship. And you got your blood ties. Now, that's how you get a chance to know about your generational thing. That who the person was in your part of your family or who was not the part of your family in the generation in the past that all is connected through the family ties family connections blood relationship and blood ties now the second format here is we talk about is the way in which two or more people or groups regards and behave towards each other now that's also similar now we just talked just seconds ago we talked about a relationship between a marriage, you know, and the relationship between the siblings. Now, here we are talking about different more categories. It talks about here a relationship between two people or more people, as we just talked about before. It says here the landlord and the tenant. Now, there's a relationship between the landlord and the tenant. Now, there are two people, right? One is a landlord and one is a tenant. So, there's a relationship between both of them. Number two is a best friend relationship. So, when you say best friend relationship, it means what? The two people who are together and they became like close friends and that's called a best friend relationship. So there are again, two people enrolled to continue or to make a relationship. All right, guys, then you got close friends relationship. You got your romantic relationship, which is of a boy and a girl. When they become like, you know, uh, friends and they become like good friends. Now that's called a romantic uh, friendship relationship. And then you got your siblings relationship. Now siblings relationships are actually uh, about your brothers and sisters. Now, there's a lot of questions people think about, and there's a question mark people have in their minds that the, the word relationship is only used for a romantic relationship. And guys, remember one thing, the word relationship is not only used for a romantic relationship, it's also used for, as you can see, it's written on the board, it's not me who's saying, it's written on the board, it says it's a relationship between two people. It can be a relationship between a, a businessman and his workers, it can be a relationship between our, a company director and our staff. It can be a good relationship between a close friends. It can be a good relationship between the best friends, a good relationship between a romantic relationship and of course a sibling. So the word relationship is not only used for romantic. Guys, make it clear to yourself. The word relationship is not only used for romantic where people always misunderstand. They think the word relationship is only used where the boy or the girl is in love. It's a romantic. No, it's always used for every relationship. The word can be used. Take an example. You meet me in the school and you come and tell me, Eric, you know what? Um, uh, for example, let's say, for example, uh, Bushra's relationship is not good with her brother. Now, there's a relationship again. Or you can say, for example, Ali's, uh, Ali's not having a good relationship with his boss. Now, when you say having not good relationship with his boss, it means what? There is, between two people, there's a connection which is not straight, which is not going on well. That's why it's called as a relationship. But sometimes people really, really misunderstand and the thing, the word relationship is only for a boy and a girl. Hello! It's not. The word relationship is used very clearly. It's mentioned there. It's used for every categories. The landlord, between the landlord and the tenant, is called a relationship. You got here best friends, it's called a relationship. You got your close friends, relationship. We got romantic relationship. We got a siblings relationship. So that's called a relationship. We talked about different categories. Now we're going to scroll down on the board. Have a look there, guys. Five things that are essential for any relationships. Guys, the time is now, nine minutes past, uh, definitely one o'clock, and I'll be taking you all the way to 145. We're going to talk about relationships. Your messages are flowing here, right here, on uh, the Justin's broadcast, along with Eric Barak. If you just call me Eric Barak, it doesn't matter, but please stop calling me teacher because I really hate to be called teacher. Just call me, hey, Eric, hey, Barak. Love you, darlings. Five things that are essential for any relationships. Now here we got five words, keywords which you need are very important to have a relationship. Now, a relationship can be any, for example, to maintain yourself in a good category of a relationship. 
these five uh, points of things are very key words which need to be applied in your life. If you have not done it, please do it. Let's do it together. Number one, trust. Number two, respect. Number three, love. And then we have understanding. And number five, we got a regular communication. Now, guys, let's start with number one, trust. For example, trust is one of the most important ingredient of a happy and a healthy relationships. Now, guys, having a trust in someone is very important. It doesn't matter what type of relationship it is. It could be a sibling's relationship. It could be a romantic relationship. It could be a best friend's relationship. It could be a relationship between the business. Guys, you need to have a trust on another person. If you don't have a trust, remember there's no relationship without a trust. A relationship cannot move without the word trust between two people. That's important. That's a key word number one. Number two, respect. Now, respect, let's highlight the word respect. It says here about respect is another important thing in a relationship. That's very much, I agree with that. You need to have respect for other person in your relationship. It does not matter whether you are into the romantic relationship or whether you are into a sibling's relationship or whether you are into your best friend's relationship or with your business relationship. You need to respect other person, which is very important. And I understand a lot of time people across the world, they, they disrespect the other person, which is very bad. It's very bad, guys. Relationship to maintain a relationship, make sure that you respect the next person. Oh, no problem, Eric. Oh, she's my girlfriend, Eric. Oh, he's my boyfriend, Eric. Oh, he's my brother. Oh, he's my sister. Who cares? You need to respect the person. That's first thing to continue your good relationship. That's number two. Number three, love. Now, the word love means what actually? A love means actually means care and important. Now, when you see someone, hey, I love you. Now, guys, remember that love you actually does not mean very strange. Sometimes I know people misunderstand when you tell someone, hey, love you. Now, people think, oh, my God, why is this guy saying to love you? Hey, guys, love you does not always think negative. Love you actually means love you means I care for you. That's called love you. But sometimes in the world, people have a very different concept. When you just say love you, they think, oh, something is going to go wrong here. Hey, that's crazy. Nothing like that going to happen. Love you actually means I care for you. So you remember guys, sometimes in the class or when you guys write me text messages, I always say, hey, my darling students, love you guys. Now that does not mean that there's something wrong. Love you means I care for you guys. All right, guys? So that's how you can tell it to your brothers, to your sisters, to your family, to your mom, to your dad, to your uncle, to your aunts, any of your relations. You can say, hey, it was nice talking to you. Bye. Love you. Now, that's all right. Now, don't think that you have to just say the word love you to enter the romantic relationship. No, it doesn't matter. You can say to your friends, you can say to your mom, to your dad, hey, dad, bye. Love you, dad. That's understandable. Come on. We have number three here, understanding to be parallel. Now, that's very, very important. Understanding to be parallel. Now, you might be thinking, what do you mean by understanding to be parallel? Now, understanding to be parallel means, there we go. For example, here we are two people, all right? Now, it could be any two people. They have to be balanced together on the same level. You can't expect one person to be down and another person to be up. But that's not called a parallel. And that doesn't work if you really are into the relations with people or the relationships. There we go. This has to be balanced. It has to be a very proper understanding between two people. That's how a relationship gets stronger. And the last one says a regular communication. Now 40 minutes past 1 o'clock. Going into the regular communications. Now the regular communication starts about here that what you mean by regular communication in a relationship. Yes, it does not mean that you start asking a person every second where you are, what you're doing. No, that is a wrong way. Regular communication means what? That you should update each other. For example, maybe once a while or in a day, maybe three or four times. Hey, I'm here. Or what I'm doing here. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to the supermarket. I'm going to the grocery. I just came back. That's perfect. But writing and asking every second, hey, where you are, what you're doing. Hey, come on. Give me a break. People have no time to listen to this all. People have, need to have their own space. The more you give space to people, the more people come close to you. 
Got it, my darling students? Now, that's all about five things that are essential for your relationship, right? Now, let's go to the next topic. It talks about here are three things which makes healthy, good relationship between all the relations we just talked about. But we're going to highlight three of them here. Ennis Cesar, thank you for joining the class. And it says here three things which makes your relationships very, very, you know, healthy. And there could be like three categories or trust we talked about before. Honesty and respect and space. Now, guys, touching down to number two is actually when you are friends to people or when you are into the relationship with people, right? It could be your girlfriend, it could be your boyfriend, it could be your best friends. Remember, make sure, be honest to other person. Always be honest. If you don't have anything, just tell the person, hey, buddy, hey, dude, I'm sorry, I don't have it. Just be real to the person. And the person, him or her, will accept you in the real way. That's called an honesty, all right, guys? Respect and space. Always remember to respect the other person. The more you respect the other person, the other person will respect you back. In English, we say, give respect and take respect. If you don't respect others, that relation will automatically go. So you have to be careful. Give a space to the person. Let him or her have their own time too. I mean, you, you should not push the person to know what's happening, where the person is, because if you trust the person automatically, you will get your person back to you. But if you start focusing to know where the person is, what did he eat, where did he, where is he gone, or where is she gone, or with whom is he or she is sitting, Hello, give me a break. This way you are going to lose a person. You're not going to be with a person. Just try to understand. We need to maintain a good relationship. It could be any categories. Your siblings, your romantic relationships, your best friends, your dad or your mom. For example, if every time your dad or your mom, your uncle, your aunt start asking where you are, what you're doing, where you are, where are you going, with whom you are going, yes, at some point you get irritated, right? But you're not able to tell. Now that's called where the relationships start getting fluctuating. It starts getting negative. That's the reason it happens. So don't come and tell me, oh, Eric, because I'm into the relationship, I have to know where she is going or where he's going. Hello, I'm sorry. You should not do that because if you do that, it will not work. Love you. Now we got six things to avoid in our relationships. All right, guys. Now, never abuse or insult. That's number one. Number two, walking away. Number three is saying reacting on emotions. Number four, comparing your relation with others and then holding back, whereas threatening to break up. Now, guys, I'm going to do a quick recap here. Never abuse or insult. Now, that's number one. Guys, always remember, if you really want to maintain a relationship with people, it could be we have been talking about different relationships, make sure that never insult or abuse the other person. How matter, however the problem is, don't abuse or insult other person, all right, guys? Walking away, now that's something very, very strange, that when something is going to happen, people start moving out, they don't want to talk to the person, they just leave the person, which is very bad. You just need to stop there and talk to him or her, or talk to him or talk to her and tell them, hey, buddy, I'm here, where's the problem? Let's sit down on the table and talk, and let's... Get the air clear. That makes your relationships more stronger. Reacting on emotions. Now, most of the time, people, they react to the emotions, which are really not good. Try to control your emotions. Sometimes we do. We are not able to control our emotions. I totally understand. But remember to control your emotions. All right, guys? Then we got here, uh, for example, holding back and threatening to break up. Now, Threatening to break up, I know you might be thinking about romantic relationships. Yes, it can be going for threatening to break up. Also, threatening to break ups are also used in other relationships too. For example, with your mom and your dad, your family, your relatives, your best friends, your friends, your siblings. Every way you, you people give threats to people and say, hey, I'm going to break up. I'm going to break up. I'm going to break up. Guys, come on. Hello. We all make mistakes. You don't have to break up just a relationship with people just because you're perfect. You're not. 
not perfect. Just remember that we all make mistakes. Now let's go to the next part here. The time is 20 minutes past one o'clock. I'm going to give you an exercise which will be coming very shortly while we talk about the spouts. And we'll be doing an exercise together and you'll get a chance to give me the answers. And let's see who will give me the right answers coming up with me in a short while. Sticking still on the relationships. We're along with Eric Barak, right here from Just English Channel. The time is 21 minutes past one. Good afternoon. Three signs of unhealthy relationship. All right, guys. Physical abuse we just talked about. On the panel here, you can see on the board it says control, what to do, what to wear, or who to hang out with, all relations. Now, that is, I think, very general standard across the world. For example, across the world, in all the relations, it's very, very controllable there, which actually starts breaking the relationships. All right, guys, let me be more clear. It's across the world. It's in every type of relationship. If these things are starting there, automatically the person, him or her, starts hating you actually, but you don't feel like that. Control. What to do or what to wear and uh, who to hang out with. When someone starts controlling you and says, no, don't go with this person, go with that person, don't wear this, don't... No, that's the time you're trying to control the person. That's the time automatic the person, he or her, will start hating you. The point will come where he or she will hate you. You need to give a space. Remember, you came into this world alone. You're going back from this world alone. You're not supposed to control people. Yes, you can You can take the decisions yourself, but you can take the ideas and taking view of someone is not bad. All right, guys? Now, let's put into the sentences here. I have kids and relationship sentences. It says here, mom always had a good relationship with her sister and brother. Now, there is a relationship between the siblings we talked about, just in the standing of the class that we got here. Number two, he had become far too familiar and apparently assumed a relationship that didn't exist. All right, guys? Now, that's, again, something between the family, actually. All right? And then we got here a relationship number three. A relationship would only get in the way. Now, when you say a relationship would only get in the way, now, guys, I know a lot of you might have been looking at this intense and you might have been just thinking about, oh, now here Eric is talking about a romantic relationship and all that. Yes, it's a part of the romantic relationship. It's also the part of your siblings. For example, when you say a relationship would only get in the way, for example, if in your house, you're in, one of your siblings got married and automatically there's a problem, there's a friction coming between, so... Then you say there, a relationship would only get in the way to avoid the problems in the family or in the relatives. So remember, these words are used for all type of relationships, more of where the relationship might lead. Now, when you talk about more type of relationships where the lead are actually things where people need to know that sometimes a wrong consequence or problems or situations can lead the relationship to break up. It can go into different directions and so need to be careful. Number four and number five says here, it wasn't a relationship she had planned or wanted until now. Now, when you say that, it means what? That the, the person here, she's going into the romantic relationship, but she never planned for it, but she just went into it. And later, I think she might have got a problem. Number six, it's not good for a relationship to build on lies and secrets. Oh my God. Now that something is very, very common across the world. People like or love to handle the situation. They want to make a relation with people by giving different stories and, and, and different views and giving different images, guys. That doesn't work in any type of relationships. Remember, the time you're real to the people, that's the right time people will accept you in their lives. All right, guys? Now, here, what I'm going to do is quickly, you can write me a sentence about a relationship. All right, guys, 24 minutes past one. I'll be going into the next phase of the class with calling the language and sports coming very shortly. But now here, to me a farewell. Can you write me down a sentence with a relationship? And I would like to see if you're able to do that. Your time stands now, darling students. Write me a sentence right now. Write me a sentence. I'm going to check on the screen your sentence. And my email address is barakeric1429 
at gmail.com. All right, guys, my email address is Barack Eric149 at gmail.com. Let's go to the next part. It talks about here colloquial language. Now, that's a question mark. A lot of time people think about what is a colloquial language. Now, colloquial language is actually a conversation which is very casual. You always have a casual conversation, and that's called a colloquial language. Now, casual conversations are always between the people you know. They're very close. She could can be your your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your best friends, or your close friends. They are the ones with whom you talk very casually and you're not too formal with them. Example, when you say here, what are you going to do? Now, when you say, what are you going to do? Uh, casually, you can just say, what you're going to do? Now, guys, that's a very casual thing, which people can do that. So it's not a big problem. As far as you do this with a formal, uh, informal, which is called as a casual. When you have a casual conversation, that's how you come to know that how to handle or how to talk to people in a very simple way. It's all casual, right, guys? It's not a formal. But when you say formal, you can say, what are you going to do? And that's very formal. When you're talking to the people with whom you're not so close or the people with whom you're not able to cope up with, now, there you can use your formal language. But where you can uh, close to your friends, to your best friends, to your romantic, to boyfriend, girlfriends, you can just talk in a very casual way. Example is on the board. It says there, what you're going to do. You see, guys, there are two different examples. I've given an example of formal, and I've given you our casual one there. Going to the colloquial use under phrases and appropriateness. Now, remember, uh, colloquial language has always had phrases and also are the category of appropriateness. Remember that these things are very important. For example, we you see a phrase, it says here, old as the hills. Now, there are a lot of phrases, old as the hill. Then you can say penny, pincer, where you can say she will be right. Australian English meaning everything will be all right, and then you get here past the bark or eight my death. Now, these are the phrases which are also actually used into the casual colloquial language, which you can use, it should not be a problem. But, guys, remember these type of conversation you cannot use into your formal. Uh, conversation. All right, guys. Number two says here appearance. Now that is, I wasn't born yesterday. There were more than one way to skin a cat, and then you said, put your money where your mouth is, and you are driving me up the wall. Now these are sentences which can be used sort of like formally, but not too casually. All right, guys. Now that was all we're talking about. Choreical language today. It is all about remember. The bottom part is we are talking about the basics are, we're talking about the casual sentences, we talked about the formal sentences. Remember, the formal sentences are always used for, for the business level or with the people with whom you're not so close. And uh, the ones which are very casual in the conversations are sentences which you can use with the people who are very close in your life or the people with whom you are very close, actually. That can be used. For example, you can be close to your boyfriend, your girlfriend, to your mom. Uh, sorry, you can't touch your mom like that or dad. Or you're close to your siblings, you're close to your best friends, to your close friends. There you can use your casual language. Now, guys, going into the topic, 29 minutes past 1 o'clock. And I'll be taking all the way to 145. The last topic for today, you're along with Eric Barak. And the class is right here. And the topic is now into the third, second hour, the third session going up with sports. Now, now, a big question mark, how do you define sports, guys? I need to know that. How do you define a sport? Hello, guys, your messages are coming up here. We got Elif. How do you define a sport? Now, sport, guys, remember we have oh, it's a noun and it's an activity we got here, which is involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team completes against another or others for entertainments. All right, guys, it's very clear. A sport is an activity involving a physical exertion and skills in which an individual or team competes against others or another for entertainment. And that's all about sports. 
We are going to talk about a lot of sports today. We're going to have a quiz today related with sports coming up very shortly. Before I sign up from the class, we're going to do a quiz together and see about sports, different types of sports. Example, I'm going to put up my cursor here. Team sports such as soccer and rugby. Now, guys, remember, we have different types of team sports. For example, we're talking about soccer and we're talking about the rugby here. It's a competitive game. These are physical recreations and we got physical activity and of course we got physical exercise and it's a pastime. Now when you say pastime means what? You do a sort of a sport where you try to kill your time. Now when you say what's kill your time Eric it means what? You're trying to do something in your free time and you want to do any sort of a sport which can run up your time and you're not or in other words you get busy yourself. Now informal sports we got here a person who behaves in a good or specified way in response to testing or teasing defeats or similarly trying situations. For example, go on or be a sport. Now, that is actually informal sport, okay guys? A person who behaves in a good or specified way in response to testing, defeat or a similarly trying situations. Example, Go on or be a sport. Now, we talked about the nouns in the sports. We're going to talk about the verbs. 31 means past 1 o'clock. We all know with Eric Barak. Verbs. Where all display is a distinct item. For example, he was sporting a huge handlebar mustache. Now, guys, don't ask me or don't look at my face and ask me, Eric, we don't know what's mustache. Hello? Mustache is the one, the hairs we have here. Now that's called mustache. All right, guys, if you never knew that, you have just told you. We got you, Anur here. Hey, Anur, welcome to the class. Thank you so much. Are you along with Eric Burak here? We're talking about mustache, guys. Mustache is the one here. Don't say Eric, I don't know mustache. Hello, mustache is here. Okay, guys, now that's called a mustache. So, for example, in the same way we have to do the sportswear, we can do a display, we have an exhibit, we got half on show, we got a show off. Now, guys, when you say a display or exhibit, oh, by chance, I'm sorry, guys, I'm putting up my t-shirt. Now, that's a final brush t-shirt, all right, guys? So, that's sort of a display, but just by chance I'm wearing, don't worry for that. Number two, play in lively and energetic way. For example, now sometimes students are there or people across the world, they want to play lively. Now when you say lively, it means energetic, okay? The children spotted in the water. Now it means what? There were some games they were doing in the water. Now that's called uh, spotted in the water. All right guys, the children spotted in the water. And then we got here, it says here, the qualifications required for having sports. Now guys, for example, to have your sports, remember, it's not just you get your sports, you wake up the next day, or you just wake up the morning and say, hey, I'm going to do my sports. Hey guys, sports have qualifications. So you need to understand and you should have qualified requirements to do a sport. All right, guys? Number one, competition between two or more individuals or teams. Now that is actually required in the sports. Then you got these rules of plays that allow a winner to be determined. Now that's number two. A primary goal of a victory. Now that is something where everyone likes to do in the sports. Everyone's target or focus is to win or to get a success. Now that's called actually a victory. All right, guys? Victory determined by the relative physical ability of a competitor and all those strategy and chance may also play a role. Now that's great. Victory determined by the relative physical ability of competitors. All those strategy and chance may also play a role. All right, guys? Now we have different type of sports. Now, guys, I know that you guys know that we have different type of sports, so not to worry. Here, I know some of the sports might be your favorite sports, and there are some sports which I really like, and some I don't like, but still, I love you. Type of sports, adventure sports, we got kayaki there, we got buff lake, and we got canoeing here, okay, guys? These are different types of sports we get. Then we got aquatic sports, for example, snorling, Olympic swimming, we got a body bodyboarding, and then we got here strength and agility sports, aerobics, and 
a kiddo. Then we got ball sports. We got a baseball. We got a basketball. And of course, not forgetting that, we got here extreme sports, where it's base jumping and abseiling. On the other hand, not forgetting that, we got sports, which are related in the mountains. We do some things in the mountains. Now, that are called actually mountain sports. And here, it's mentioned there, mountain sports are actually the ones you climb, you do tracking, you do cross-country cycling, all right? And motorized sports, drifting, formula racing, all right, guys? Now, we were talking about different type of races, different type of uh, sports. Now, we got here a small exercise for you guys before we sign out for today. Here, are guys, exercise we got, and you have to name the sports. I'm giving you two pictures here, guys. Look at the pictures and let me know what sport do you think these are, guys. Come on, let me know. Your messages are flowing. Just let me know which sport you think is number one and which sport is number two. I need your answers. 36 minutes past uh, 1 o'clock. Remember, we just got like two minutes to sign up from today's class. So your answers are coming. Look at the image, guys. Look on the board and let me know. That uh, image number one, which sport do you think it is? And number two, which sport do you think that is? Come on, guys, look at the board and try to name me the sports. I'm going to count to three. Countdown starts right now. Three, two, and let's see who wants to give me the answer. I think there is no answer. Let me give you the answer, guys. Number one sport is, for example, it's a swimming. Then you got number two is your cycling. Remember, number one is your swimming. Number two is your cycling. And I'm going to the next race down here. We got number three and four. And let's put number five. Now, guys, we got three more images here. We got sport number three. We got sport number four and number five. Let me now look at the board and let me now which sports are these? If you can just try, if you're not able to understand or you don't remember, just try to try and give me the name of the sport. All right, guys? Your time stats now to count down three, two, and one. Guys, okay, let me give out the answers. Number three is actually a soccer. And number four is definitely not forgetting out. It's going to be your rod, guys, your volleyball. And then you have number five is your, hello, what's number five, darlings? Number five is your handball. Okay, guys, number six, there we go with number six, seven, and eight. Let's see what's here. Guys, I'm giving you one second. Look at the images now and tell me which sports these are. Number six, number seven, and number eight. You're along with Eric Barak at 38 minutes past one o'clock. You are enjoying a class with me in just English. So stay tuned and enjoy the rest of your class right here with me for a few seconds. We'll be together and then I'll be signing out. Look down here, guys, onto the board. Number six, number seven, number eight. And let me know. Which pictures are those? Which sports are those? If you are able to answer me, that could be great. If not, I'll be here to give you the answers. Not to worry for that. We got your number six is a table tennis. We got there. Then we got number seven is your judo karate, uh, which is very much popular with Japan or China or with Korea. And then number eight is actually your boxing. All right, guys. Now those are your sports. Then we got the next category. We got number 9, 10, and 11. Now, this is very, very funny. And I think one of the games is very popular in Turkey. People love to play number 10. That's chess. Oh, sorry, I gave the answer. Good. Hi, Mamet. Good. How are you, Mamet? Good to see you in the class. I'm talking slow today, Mamet. And so, join the class. We are doing the images. We're talking about the sports. So, number 9, number 10, number 11. Guys, look on the board and let me know that which sports are these. Number 9, 10, and 11. Number 10, I've just given you the answer. There's a chance. Give me the sport name. Number 9 and number 11, guys. Let me know. What is the sport number nine? Look at the picture very carefully and number 11, 10. I will disclose the answer and that was a chess. Guys, number nine, number nine, let me know what's number nine. And that's guys, a hockey is an ice hockey, remember? And then we got down is number 11, which is a basketball. And let's try your next three images. Here we go, guys. Let's scroll down. Let's check here. Number 12, number 13, and number 14. 
Guys, let me know. We're still into the sports. Let me know which sports do you think these are. Number 12, number 13, and number 14. You're along with me, Eric Barak. Guys, I need your answers here. Try to look at your image and let me know which sports are this. Which category is number 12, number 13, and of course, number 14. Guys, I need your answers. Thank you so much. Are you there? Hello. Don't sleep down. Come on. My darlings, don't sleep. We're going to finish the class. Don't sleep. Hello. Good. We got number 12. There is the motorbike sport. Number 13 we got here is uh, snowboarding. And of course, number 14 is not difficult too. Number 14 actually is fishing. And then your last one. Uh, now that is a bit tricky. Number 15, guys. If you've done number 15, I think most of the time people love doing number 15. Most of the time, guys, number 15. All right, now that I think is bowling, right? Guys, this is all about the sports for today we talked about. Remember that today's class was a great fun we had today. It was a fun. We learned a lot today. Today, in the first hour of the class, we were talking about tenses. We talked about past simple. We talked about past uh, continuous. We talked about past perfect and we talked about the formulas which are involved in how to get the tenses in a proper shape in the sentences. We talked about that in the first hour today and you all were participating. Thank you so much for attending the class and it was a great fun for being with you guys. We had a break and the great break we had and guys I'm so sorry I know in the first hour I was not able to zoom uh, the board, but I did right now, and I hope so tomorrow in the class we will have no problems, so I'm not to worry. And also remember, in the second hour, we were talking about the very good topic today. We talked about relationships. We talked about different type of relationships. We talked about colloquial uh, colleague language words. We talked about sentences and phrases. We also talked, the last thing we talked about was the sports, guys. It was a great thing, and I know, guys, that uh, it was a great vocabulary we did in the second part of today's class was relationships, colloquial language, and we talked about different types of sports and why we do sports is all about we talk today. And great, I think it was a great time for you today. And guys, I know the Byram is like coming very soon, very sharply. We are going to enter into the Byram. So guys, make sure that you guys are staying safe and, and going to have a lot of chill, a lot of fun with your family, with your friends, during Bayram and also remember not forgetting out your class because you need to study and of course learning English at Just English is a great time and great fun. Guys remember at Just English you have a wide range of teachers from different parts of the world. We give you a lot of information. It's all happening at Just English. So guys it's never too late. Join Just English and get a chance to be with we international teachers right here. We are here to take care of all your needs. We want to make you perfect in English and make sure that you get the best out of us right here on Just English channel. 43 minutes past 12. A very short. I'll be going to sign up today from the class. Thank you once again for joining. And guys, tomorrow, just remember, I'll be catching you in the class tomorrow at 6 p.m. From 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow will be my live broadcast broadcast class so tomorrow make sure tomorrow morning tomorrow morning, afternoon do everything you want to go to sleep have a good sleep you want to have a lunch or a, or a breakfast make sure everything is done you want to go for a shopping you want to go to the grocery you want to make a phone call to your friends you want to talk to your mom or dad do everything before six o'clock so that later at 6 p.m you come with me in the class Two hours will be together tomorrow, remember, and then you're going to have a great time, great fun right here along with Eric Barak. And hello, just call me Eric or you can call me Barak, but don't call me teacher. I love you guys. I miss you guys. You, you know that way, right? I love you and I miss you guys. I'm not forgetting out that I am always there for you guys. If you have any problems, just send me an email and I'll be there to answer your emails. If you need any material, I'll send you across a material with attachments on the on the email. And my email address is barackeric1429 at gmail.com. Guys, time will be coming very short in a few seconds. 
I will be signing out from today's class. Till then, you take care of yourself. And remember, this evening, you're going to have a great time with your family, with your friends. Love you guys. Um, you are my darlings, of course. And don't forget that without you, I am nothing. And remember, with you, I'm always completed. Love you, my darlings. Love you, my students. Take care of yourself. Have a great evening. Tomorrow, I'll catch you between 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. right here on Just English Channel. For now, Eric Burak says to you, goodbye.